Welcome to this third video about linear regression. In this video, we'll have a look at how we can perform hypothesis testing in linear regression. From the basic video about linear regression, we saw how linear regression generated an equation that could be used to estimate the price of a car given its age. The general formula for linear regression looks like this. To simplify this equation a bit, Let's consider the case where we only have one explanatory variable, x1. We can therefore simplify the equation to this. y is our dependent or response variable. beta0 is the population y-intercept. beta1 is the population slope. x1 is the independent or explanatory variable. And epsilon is the so-called error term that represents all the variation in a dependent variable that cannot be explained by the explanatory variables. Note that beta0 and beta1 are parameters or coefficients that we like to estimate based on a sample. Just as we estimate the population mean denoted by mu by taking a sample from the population. Since we usually never have data for the whole population, we estimate the beta parameters by using a sample. When fitting a model to the sample data, one usually uses the following notations for the regression model, where y hat is the estimated value of the response variable based on the sample data. The letter b is used to represent that it is a sample estimate of the population parameters beta. b0 is the estimate of beta0 based on the sample data and b1 is the estimate of beta1. Just as we do for other statistical tests, we can formulate a null and an alternative hypothesis. Usually, we like to test if the population parameters are different from zero. For example, the null hypothesis might state that the slope of the regression line is equal to zero whereas the alternative hypothesis might state that the slope is not equal to zero. To test this, we might collect a sample and perform a statistical test. As usual, we set the significance level to 0 0.05. For example, let's use the same data as we used in the first lecture about linear regression, where we estimated how the price of similar cars changed as a function of the age of the cars. The aim is to estimate the slope in order to know how much the price is reduced per year. By using linear regression, the intercept was estimated to 30.57 and the slope to negative 3.55, which means that the price is estimated to decline by 3550 euros each year. The estimated value of the population slope is therefore negative 3.55. Given our data an estimate of the slope, can we reject the null hypothesis that states that the slope is equal to zero? In other words, can we reject the possibility that the age of the car does not affect the price? To calculate the p-value that is associated with the slope, we first compute the t-statistic, which is calculated by dividing the estimated value of the slope by the standard error of the slope. The standard error of the slope in our example can be calculated by the following formula. However, to save time, I here use the software to compute the standard error. The standard error of the slope in this example is equal to 0 0.72. If we log in the values for the slope and the standard error and do the math, we see that the t statistic is equal to negative 4.93. We then use a t-distribution with n-2 degrees of freedom because we have estimated two parameters in our regression model, the intercept and the slope. Since our sample size is 6, we use a t-distribution with 4 degrees of freedom. By using a software, the area to the left of negative 4.93 and to the right of positive 4.93 is 0 0.008, which represents our p-value of the test. Since the p-value is less than our significance level, 
or reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the slope is significantly less than zero. However, the main focus of using linear regression on car sales data is to predict the price. Statistical inferences concerning the population parameters are usually of less interest. It is no surprise that the price is reduced over the years. In contrast, in the following example, it is more interesting to know if the slope is significantly different from zero. This is the same example as in the first lecture about linear regression, where one has measured the systolic blood pressure of seven random individuals from the population. The aim of the study is to see if age affects the systolic blood pressure. By looking at the data, it seems like all the people generally had a higher blood pressure. However, do we have enough evidence to reject a null hypothesis that states that the slope is equal to zero, which means that age does not affect the systolic blood pressure? By using linear regression, the slope was estimated to 0 0.285, which means that the systolic blood pressure is estimated to increase by 0 0.285 when a person gets one year older. We will now test if the slope is significantly different from zero, given our estimated value of the slope and the standard error, which was computed to 0 0.044 by using a software. The estimated slope divided by the standard error results in a t-statistic of 6.48. Since we have seven data points and have estimated two parameters, we use a t-distribution with seven minus two degrees of freedom. The area in these two tails, which represents our p-value, is approximately equal to 0 0.001. We can therefore reject another hypothesis that the slope is equal to zero, I conclude that there is a significant increase in the systolic blood pressure with increasing age. Similar to the slope, we can also test if the intercept is significantly different from zero. However, that is usually not that interesting. In this case, the null hypothesis would state that newborns have a blood pressure of zero. As we discussed in the first lecture about the basics of linear regression, we should not put too much faith in the intercept, since we do not have any data points from children in this example. Therefore, it does not make sense to perform hypothesis testing of the intercept in this case. In addition to calculate the p-value for the slope, we can also calculate a confidence interval around the slope with the following equation. In this case, the standard error can be interpreted as we are about 68% sure that the true population parameter is within 0 0.285 plus or minus 0 0.044. To create a 95% confidence interval, we need to multiply the standard error by 1.96 if our sample size is large. If the sample size is small, we should instead multiply by the t-score that defines 95% of a t-distribution with n minus k degrees of freedom, where n is the sample size and case the number of parameters we have estimated. Since we have seven data points and have estimated two parameters, we use a t-distribution with five degrees of freedom. By using a software, the positive t-score that defines 95% of the area is 2.57. Next, we plug in the values and calculate the lower and upper bounds of the 95% confidence interval. 0 0.044 times 2.57 is approximately equal to 0 0.113. 0 0.285 plus or minus 0 0.113 gives us the bounds of the 95% confidence interval. This confidence interval tells us that we are 95% sure that the true population slope lies between 0 0.172 and 0 0.398. Note that the confidence interval does not include the value 0, which means that the slope of 0 is not likely. This was the end of this lecture about hypothesis testing in linear regression. Thanks for watching.